Be inspired with the special message from Bishop Macedo. Hello dear friends, may God bless you all and may he bless you indeed. Bless you indeed. And the greatest blessing God can give us is to enlighten our understanding. It's to open our understanding so that we may be able to understand Him. <laughs> Have you thought of that? You, you speak sometimes with a doctor and they use those scientific technical terms that you don't understand anything. You just say yes, yes. You speak to anybody who is knowledgeable in the subjects of this world that you don't understand, you just agree, you say yes, yes, because you don't understand. Now imagine you talking to the Almighty. Imagine you talking to the Most High and understand Him, which is the most glorious part. You understand Him, you comprehend His language, you understand his thoughts, you understand his ideologies, you understand his will. Now imagine you when you are able to speak to the Almighty face to face as it was the case with Moses. Wouldn't it be glorious? Moses could have been the unhappiest man on earth. But just for the fact that he was able to speak to the Creator of heaven and earth, the Almighty, he spoke to him face to face. Wow, this is too much. This is too glorious, isn't it? The text says that the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. God made himself Moses' friend. This is too great. Who wouldn't like to be in Moses' shoes when God would speak to him face to face? Who wouldn't like that? Wow! Think with me, dear friends. You can be in the presence of the most important person in the world, but before the face of the Almighty, there is no greater glory than that. There is no greater wealth than that. One minute, one second, only one little second before Him. Have you imagined that? How glorious this is. And to understand Him, to understand all of His plan for your life. This is too glorious. Very well. God spoke to Moses face to face. But God is so great, so wonderful, so great, so infinite, so merciful, so compassionate, patient, that He, He, God Himself, became flesh and dwelt in our midst, which is Jesus. <laughs> Jesus came to the world and did that, and His followers saw Him, touched Him, listened, heard Him. They had glorious moments with Him. However, Jesus came to fulfill a mission. And the mission was the will of the Father. The will of the Father is that He, Jesus, would serve Him as the Lamb. A Lamb, the sacrifice that would remove the sin from the world. Therefore, Jesus submitted to the will of the Father. He groaned, he suffered as nobody else, but he fulfilled his role and he 
perfectly did his work. He fulfilled perfectly well his mission. And Jesus went back to the Father. He went back to the Father. However, he didn't leave us orphans. He sent another comforter, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is not to lean towards us as an unclean spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Holy God, of the Holy Trinity. And He comes not to speak with us face to face, as it was the case with Moses. Today, we have an infinite greater privilege than the one Moses had, because Moses saw the Lord face to face. God spoke to him face to face. But today, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, He comes and makes His dwelling place. He lives inside those who believe in the Lord Jesus. Meaning, those who believe in Him, those who give themselves to Him, those who give their life to Him, those who accept Him as their Lord, their Savior, their King. So, when a person gives themselves to the one who died on the cross for them, who is Jesus, then the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, the same Spirit that resurrected Him from the dead comes and descends upon that person and dwells within them. So you see, for example, why? Let me speak of my example as, as a testimony. I can't speak for others. I can speak of my own testimony. God came upon me one day. I was that person that was very, very low, full of complexes, full of, you know, weaknesses. I was very weak, full of mistakes. And one day, He came and reached out His hand to me. The Holy Spirit came upon me. He came upon me and convinced me of my sin. Because as a young man, I was 19, I thought that I didn't have that many sins. I wouldn't do drugs. I didn't know drugs existed back then. I wasn't an alcoholic. I didn't live you know, in promiscuity. I didn't live a life, you know, without any control. No way. I was a young man just like any other who worked during the day. I would go to school in the evening time and I would go home afterwards. That's how it was. My life was like this. And I thought that I was not a sinner. I had my sins, of course, but I didn't think that, oh, I had so many sins. But in order to need a Savior, but the Holy Spirit, when He came upon me, He showed me my sin. And I was so afraid. I was so scared. I was so desperate. You have no idea, dear friends of what I experienced for a few seconds, for a few moments in which the Holy Spirit showed me who I really was. Wow! Wow! Back then, there was no such thing as those things that there is today. It was much easier in the terms of seeing and, and 
promiscuity. However, he showed me my sin, and I was desperate. And I asked him, who can save me? And then he pointed me towards Jesus. And Jesus forgave me. Only he could have done that. I remember as if it was yesterday. It's been 60 years already. But I remember as though it had happened yesterday. And since then, never again. I never had the same thoughts again. I never again was weak. I was never weak again. I never had complexes ever again. From then on, it was all over. I was a new person. Dear friends, every and any problem that you have, whether it's your health or an emotional problem or problems in your love life, whether it's a family problem or a marriage problem, relationship problems, whatever is the problem, whatever the problem may be, a financial problem, whatever your problem may be, whatever it is, you have to invest all your life, all of your strength, all of your being, all of your soul, all of your body, all of your spirit, a hundred percent on the altar. Receive the Holy Spirit and God will speak to you as he spoke to Moses. Isn't it nice? God will speak to you in the same way he spoke to Moses, as a friend. As a close friend, yesterday we spoke about the strange tongues and God gives us the privilege as a sign, a sign of his seal in us, which is the strange tongues. So when a person speaks in, in tongues, then, as I said yesterday, the purpose was and it is for you to have an intimate connection, communication between you and God, God and you, as it happened to Moses. When God spoke to Moses, he spoke to Moses alone. So when you have the Holy Spirit, he doesn't speak to you face to face. He speaks inside of you because he's inside of you. He directs you. He leads you. He conducts you. He makes you strong. Even in the difficult moments, the hardest moments of weaknesses and all in your life, He's there instructing you, exhorting you, comforting you. He comforts you. He will be there doing his work inside of you. However, the question is, Bishop, wow, I've already done everything to receive the Holy Spirit and I still haven't received him. Why? Do you know why you still haven't received him? Do you want to know? Don't come with these questions. Bishop, why haven't I received him? I've done this and that and the other and blah, blah, blah. You may have done whatever you want. But if you haven't done what you had to do, then it's not going to work. What do you have to do? The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. So if you want the Spirit of Truth, the first thing that you have to do is to stop all lies, is to stop your life of lies, your life of deceit, your life of sins, your life of mistakes. You have to get out, you have to abandon, to turn your back on the old life so that then you can enter or you can walk in the path where you will meet God. You are going to abandon your lies, your mistakes, and I don't know, I, I don't want to know, and I don't even care to know what they are. But you know what mistakes, what sins are. The Holy Spirit shows us what our sins are. He showed me, He will show you as well. 
So you know what they are, and you have to abandon them. You have to turn your back on them. When you take this direction and you incline towards what is righteous, then the Holy Spirit introduces you the Savior, the one who washes, who cleanses, who purifies, and He does His work. And that's why the Lord Jesus said like this, when the Spirit of Truth comes, He will guide you into all truth, meaning into all righteousness, everything that is righteous, correct, that is blameless. He will guide you into these things. Did you understand, dear friend? Do I have to explain anymore? Do I have to draw a picture and color it up with paint so you can fully understand? No, I don't. You just have to use your mind and make a decision because it's not a matter of feeling. Oh, I don't feel this, I don't feel that, and so-and-so said this and the other. I don't care what so-and-so said. What matters is your soul. You have to make a decision. And you decide for your soul when you think, when you reason, according to God, according to His Word. Do that. Do that. And do it urgently. And the Holy Spirit, He for sure is already touching you. If you were called and chosen, then you can be sure that the Holy Spirit is already acting inside of you. He is already making you feel bothered, uncomfortable inside of you with this situation that you are living in. So, you just have to go and do it. Go to the altar. Go to the altar. Go to the altar. Place your life on the altar. Place your whole being on the altar. Your future. Place your past, your present, and your future there on the altar. It's pointless for you to go to the altar with an offering, with money, with gold and silver and properties. If you don't go with all of your heart, with all of your strength, with all of your soul. Because this is the offering of all offerings. And whoever wants will go. Whoever believes will go. Whoever believes will obey. And they are not afraid. They go in full strength. And they don't care about what others are saying or thinking or not saying or not thinking. Your soul, dear friends, is unique in your life. Take care of it so that it may live through eternity with God. All right? May God bless you all, and I see you tomorrow. Sunday now, I mean from Saturday to Sunday, we will start the fast of Daniel, 21 days of isolation from secular information. Is it a sacrifice? Yes, it's a sacrifice, but you don't have to stop eating or drinking, you don't have to stop living your life, but you have to allow your mind to be clean, clean, so that your soul may dive into the ocean of the Spirit. May God bless you all, and I see you tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.